Good afternoon, friends. Okay. Hey, remember when I used to open these saying, what's up, jerks? I really liked that. Um, but I feel like all the people who never watched all my private videos just wouldn't understand if I called them jerks. So, whatever. People. Hello, people. Okay, so what we're doing here today, if my um, sweatshirt and the title of the video did not clue you in, uh, trying out new filming location, not sure I like it, but I didn't, this is why we're here today. This, this stack, uh, I didn't want to move that giant stack of books anywhere. Um, so we're just gonna leave it here and I'm gonna sit next to the giant stack of books. And what this giant stack of books is, is all the physical copies of my October spooky season TBR. Pippin Elaine Warren. Hey! Stop it. Stop. He's, I got all my curtains open for light and he's trying to climb them. He climbs them when they're closed. And I swear to God, you guys. Here, come here. Say hi to everyone. Say hi. Say hi. Can you show everyone you cute me out? TBR. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through, I've got my laptop here and I'm going to go through the stuff that I don't have physical copies of either because I'm no, I think I have all my physical books now, so that's fine. So it's just uh, ebooks and audiobooks that I don't have. And what I'm actually doing for spooky season, once again, this year, I don't know why I can't resist this challenge. I've done it like six or seven times now, but it's so satisfying to get through so many books in a month. That's do reading a book a day. So 31 books, one for every day of October. And I'm not sure what I'm calling it yet. I called the last time I did this in 31 days something something Mount TBR, <laughs> chopping down Mount TBR or something, I don't know. And then I'll probably call it Spooky Season Edition or something very creative like that, slash not creative at all. I've learned things doing this, this over the last two years when I do these challenges, and that's to have lots of audiobooks and then also have books that you can know for sure you can read in either one sitting or one day, for sure. And then stagger the bigger books at times when you've got given yourself like an audiobook or or a very small ebook or something so hopefully i can actually get through it <laughs> i've done it before so i can do it again but we'll see so another part of this video i'm going to be predicting what i think i will give these rate the these what ratings i think i will give these books to what ratings i will give to these books talk good the first book I have that I don't physically have a copy of and that's because the only physical copy that currently exists was a hundred no I'm sorry it was $45 but there was only a limited amount of physical copies from subterranean press and that is Rose House by Arcady Martin I am not entirely sure what this is I think it's some sort of haunted house story but with AI I think or maybe like robots I'm not positive I know that it mixes horror and technology, but honestly, I don't even care because the cover is gorgeous and Arcady Martine, I will follow her anywhere because her first, her debut duology is one of the smartest, coolest, most fun things I've ever read. So yeah, check out Arcady Martine. So for Rose House, I gave both of their previous books five stars. So that's pretty rare for a debut and the debut sequel to get five stars from me. So I wanna say this will be five stars, but I don't historically love novellas. It takes a lot, like something truly unique and really cool to get me to five star a novella because they're so short. I have a hard time building up an emotional connection. So I'm gonna say four stars on this one. Now I'm gonna to try to be accurate in these predictions, not what I want to happen. Like. Obviously, I want all of these to be four and five stars because that's the that's the ideal. Like, I don't want all my books to be five star reads because then the, the five stars wouldn't ever stand out. I, like, I want variety, but I also want to like every book that I read. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So, I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to try and be realistic, not optimistic here in these ratings. Okay, so next one that I don't have a physical copy of is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. So I liked the Hacienda uh, when I read it. Didn't love it. I did it by audio. I'm doing this one by audio as well. 
but I don't know something I, I'm not a huge Western person and this is a supernatural Western dramatic love story star-crossed lovers thing in the I think 1840s Mexico and like I can, I'm not positive but it's like it's definitely got Western vibes and I'm not always great with those so we'll see but the cover is so pretty and why not so for Vampires of El Norte I'm gonna say 3.5 or 4 stars because that is what I gave the Hacienda uh, actually I gave the Hacienda 4 stars straight up but I liked the premise of the Hacienda better than I liked the premise of Vampires of El Norte that wasn't a western it was a gothic horror and I like gothic books better than westerns so I'm gonna say three and a half I'm gonna of course hope for more but three and a half is my prediction the next audiobook is The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Craw. I don't remember what this is about. I remember being very intrigued by it when I put it on my TBR when it was first announced and I wanted to try a Cassandra Craw. I'm not reading their first book with the scary lady on it. I can't do that. Uh, plus it gets so-so reviews. So I'm just like, this one sounds more up my alley. I, I don't remember what it was about, but there was something about it. Okay, so for The Salt Crows Heavy, I'm going to say three stars. And the reason I'm going to say three stars is, once again, this is a novella. So my ability to become emotionally involved in a novella is very difficult. And I need that emotion to be able to give a fifth star usually. So right away, that's going to knock, knock it to four probably. But then also, I feel like there's a strong possibility with this author because I've never read anything by them before and their stuff seems super weird. I'm either gonna really love it or be grossed out and like not enjoy it even while I can see what it is they're doing. So I feel like three. Now I'm hoping for three and a half or four. This is what I'm actually hoping for, but I'm gonna guess three if we're, if we're betting. I'm gonna say three stars. I hope I'm wrong. The so next up, the book that I have a not a physical copy of is Grave Expectations. I think this one's by Alice Bell. I can't remember. I don't have it in front of me right now, but this one just sounds super fun. So I, I tried to make a mix of this TBR of like actually scary things, thrillery things, murdery things, mystery things, and like true horror. But then I've also got some campy horror in here. And uh, this is this is more like supernatural mystery. So it's about, and I can't remember if it's adult or not, or if it's new adult or young adult. I cannot remember at this moment, but I know that the premise is that the main character has been able to see the ghost of her best friend for a pretty long time. And they, like, they still hang out with her best friend as a ghost and her best friend was murdered. And I think it's about them solving her murder and also maybe somebody else's murder. I can't remember, but it's getting great reviews and it sounds really fun. Like Ghost Best Friend, come on. So for this one, I'm gonna predict, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be generous here and I'm gonna predict four and a half stars. Like, I don't think it'll be a five, but I think I'm gonna, something's gonna boost it up to the four and a half star range, but I'm gonna keep it at four, like on good reason stuff, although it'll be a four star, but four and a half. That's my prediction. Next audiobook I've got is Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix. This is actually the second Grady Hendrix that I have on this list. You'll see the first one in a second. So Paperbacks from Hell, this is, I think this is the only nonfiction. No, no, I'm reading another nonfiction. So this is uh, one of two nonfictions that I'm reading this October. It's a, I think it's a book just about pulp horror fiction and why we love it and why Grady Hendrix loves it. And I think he's gonna do a survey of the different books that are historically in this genre because he loves that campy stuff. He loves the like really ridiculous over the top horror stuff. Like that's very clear in his writing that he loves that stuff. So I'm thinking this book is just going to be a giant ode to campy fun horror, but that also has worth because he totally thinks it has worth because he writes it. So I'm going to predict four stars on that one because I really like books about books and I like Grady Hendrix. Okay, next up is a book called Transmogrify with an exclamation point. This is a YA anthology about all featuring trans characters or non-binary characters or people up and down the gender spectrum. And I think it's uh, witchy, witchy, 
trans stories? I, I can't remember. I know it's it's spook on the spooky spectrum, or I wouldn't have put it on my TBR. Uh, I'm not a huge short story lover, but this the cover's so cute, and I just I feel like it'll be a good time. So with short, the way I rate short story collections is I give each individual story a rating, and then I average those ratings out, and then that will be the rating. And then depending on the vibe of the collection and how much I enjoyed myself overall and how successful I think the collection is, I will then round up or round down because it's usually a like a 3.25 or a 3.37 or something like that. So uh, it's never like a straight 3.5 or a four star. That would be, I mean, sometimes, but usually not. So my prediction I think for this one is going to be because it's YA and I'm not a huge YA fan and YA anthologies historically have not been hits for me all the time. So I'm gonna say 3.44. Don't know if I'll round up or down. I don't have that prediction inside of me. How many more do I have left? One, two, two more. Okay, so I've got Wolf Gone Wild. Who is this one by? Sorry, I thought I remembered all the author's names. A steamy slow burn werewolf romance. So there you go. That's what it's about. Uh, Juliet Cross. Okay. I think that's what I knew in my head, but I wanted to double check. So it's by Juliet Cross. I've heard really good things about this. I don't historically love steamy romances anymore, but I've also heard this is really cute. And I like the idea of a witch and a werewolf falling in love. It has potential. But I also think it could go wrong and it would might not be my thing. So I'm also going to predict 3.5 stars. Don't know if I'll round up or down. Obviously, if I enjoy myself, I'll round it up. If I don't enjoy myself as much or I think there's a significant flaw, I'm going to round down. But 3.5 is my prediction. Okay, and the last non-physical book that I have here is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. This is one I've been wanting to get to forever because I heard it's a uh, portal fantasy slash horror. And the idea of a portal horror just tickles me. Also, I've heard this is one of her funnier books and I really liked A House with Good Bones when I read it earlier this year. And because it had that, that humorous sensibility that I'd heard that her books had, but I hadn't experienced yet because the only book I'd read of hers was The House of Usher retelling that I always forget the name of, What Moves the Dead. And that one wasn't funny. It had good vibes, but they weren't funny vibes. So I, I really like the humor and I, this is one of those. I'm a little nervous to do the audio because a lot of the times humorous books, if the narrator doesn't get the tone right, it actually makes it worse. So we'll see, but I'm doing it and I'm going to predict 4.5 stars. That is going to be my prediction with the potential to round up to five. Okay, so that's that's all my um, audio and ebooks. So Rose has this ebook, if I didn't say. I don't think there was an audio when I put my TBR together. I don't know if there's an audiobook now, but I will be doing it by ebook because I already have it and I bought it. So, and I can do a novella on ebook, um, hopefully. So now let's get to the physical TBR. And this is where I'm gonna make a mess. I'm gonna try and keep these books in order <laughs> so that I don't have to go back to my list and restack them but I am gonna dismantle my stack. I'm not going to show you all the books, so if you think you can guess what these books are just from these little bit of the spines, good on you, but I'm not gonna move it. The first one we have is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. So I'm actually really excited about this one. It's a gothic, supposedly dark academia. I don't know why I use air quotes so much. Is this like a 90s thing? Or is it just a me thing? I don't know, but this is a, gothic fantasy-ish book, I think it's a fantasy, about a young girl uh, named Effie, I think is her name, and she's always had these haunting visions slash dreams of this fairy king, and she doesn't know where they come from, and I guess there's this book, it says that she's found solace in the pages of Angarad, Angarad? Uh, author Emrys Myrdin's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king and then destroys him. And then she gets the chance to go to study, I think, at the author's house. And there's another young man there also studying. But I think he's there under nefarious purposes 
and she's there because this guy is her favorite author and they have to live in this house on the top of a cliff. So that's what I got. I don't know too much more than that. I knew more at one point, but I have since purposely or non-purposefully <laughs> forgotten so that I can be surprised by the story. But uh, this is my very first book. I'm starting it tomorrow. And it's actually not very long or it doesn't feel very long. It's like 350 pages with pretty big font and the pages are small and they're like double spaced. So I think I should be able to easily get this, this in a day. Oh no, I missed one. Guys, I missed one. I can't believe I missed this one because I'm super excited about it. Okay, so the first audiobook I'm actually reading is Whale Fall. And I do not remember the author's name. I'm sure it will be on the book cover right here once I do my thing in editing. And Whale Fall is a story, a book told in real time, which it'll be fun to see how he does that, about a man who's swimming in the ocean and gets swallowed by a whale and has only a certain amount of time to escape before his air runs out. And it is a horror sci-fi thriller. And that just sounds so fun. Like it has the potential. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be funny or not, but it has the potential to be sort of like The Martian or um, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir in that so, uh, somebody's doing science and trying to think their way and science their way out of problems and be problem solvers in order to save their lives. Um, it's like survival, scientific survivalism. So if it was funny, that would be perfect but I think maybe it's gonna be scary and not funny, but we'll see. But I'm very excited about it. So stay tuned on that. Okay, so that's actually, I'm glad I remembered that because I was super excited to talk about it and I haven't seen anyone read it yet. So I'm really hoping that it's good. Um, oh, prediction for, um, sorry, I, I'm so chaotic right now. I just feel my brain is, prediction for this is five stars. Um, I can't believe I just said that. I hope it works uh, tomorrow. And then prediction for whale fall, I'm going to say four and a half. It's probably going to be a four, but I'm going to say four and a half because I just really want to love it. So I'm, I'm betting on myself. I'm betting on you book. I'm betting on you. So next up is my best friend's exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So this is the second Grady Hendrix book that I have on my list. I just, I'm going to read everything that he writes. So he wrote this, so I have to read it. And I just love the eighties vibes of this. This is like, I know everyone loves the other cover, but there's something about it. I hate, and I can tell you exactly what that something is. And it's her hair. The vibes are good, but the hair is not, and I don't like it. So I bought this version, which is super cute. And it's got, it's giving me like flashbacks because it's got like, this is a yearbook and all, all of the main character's friends, I guess her name is Gretchen, have signed it. And then the first couple of pages are yearbook pages. So it's clearly got an 80s high school vibe. And it's about a girl who has to, I think, help her best friend deal with um, a little possession. And uh, I, I just, I'm really, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm going to say this is going to be a four star though because the premise itself isn't one that automatically calls out to me. So I'm betting that it's probably not going to be as interesting to me as the other books that I've already read by him, which did call out to me in terms of the premise. So, but I could be wrong. So we'll see, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess four stars. Next up, we have a book I've had on my TBR for a very long time. And that is The Eighth Detective by Alex Pavesi. It's been so long since I put this on my TBR that I no longer remember what it's about. It's a mystery book. Uh, there's eight detectives. Apparently there's birds. I don't know. Let's look real quick. There's rules for murder mysteries. There must be a victim, a suspect, a detective. Grant McAllister, an author of crime fiction and professor of mathematics, once sat down and worked out all the rules of murder, publishing seven perfect detective stories to demonstrate. But that was 30 years ago. Now he's living a life of seclusion on a quiet Mediterranean island until Julia Hart, a sharp, ambitious editor, knocks on his door. His early work is being republished and together the two of them must be revisit those old stories. An author hiding from his past and an editor keen to understand it. Okay, so I'm going to make a sad prediction on this one. Uh, I really hope I'm wrong, 
I want this to be like a four star, but I'm thinking because I haven't seen many people read it. And when they have read it, they haven't super loved it. There's always a chance that I'm going to be the outlier though, because the premise really calls to me. And I know that this sort of like nerdy inside baseball writer stuff and inside the genre specifically doesn't appeal to everyone, but it really appeals to me. So I want this to be like a four and a half star book, but I'm going to say it's going to be a three star book that there must be a reason why it's not very popular and not very well loved, but I'm going to hope that I'm wrong. This one is one I bought actually in the same book outlet haul as that book. And that is the case of the murderous Dr. Cream by Dean Job, the hunt for a Victorian era serial killer. I love true crime. I love history. I love when history and true crime intersect. Love old timey serial killers. I guess I'm a basic bitch that way. I'm, I'm not a basic bitch in many ways, but when it comes to true crime, I sort of am. So there you go on that, that front. But I don't remember specifically who this guy was, but I remember that he was super creepy and I think it involves doctoring or maybe dentistry. Maybe he's a dentist doctor. I don't, I don't know, but true, true crime serial killer. Presumably that's him. I don't know. Maybe that's the guy who caught him. I don't know, but it says on the back that it's macabre, utterly suspenseful, true crime thriller about a forgotten madman, every bit as cunning and evil as Jack the Ripper. They have no way to prove that claim, by the way, because we still don't know who Jack the Ripper is. So I'm I'm gonna call um, bullshit on that blurb, but I'm still excited about the book and I'm gonna, I'm predicting a solid four star on this one. Okay, next up is an <laughs> another T. Kingfisher. So I've got a couple of doubles in here and that is the Twisted Ones. And I don't remember what this one's about and I don't, want to tell my I don't want to spoil myself I think I want to go in not knowing nothing on this one there's like a scary looking little man in there I think this is one of her funny ones but it might not be and it looks a little bit more creepy than the other one so who knows and it says the devil is waiting in between these pages so maybe it's like a, a possession or a demon story I don't know but I'm predicting solid four on this one this one oh oh boy I'm so looking forward to this one and that is uh, Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes, uh, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide. And Rupert Holmes, for those of you who don't know, is the one who wrote the Pina Colada song. So, singer turned mystery author, and it's, there were two books actually published this year, and I have both of them on my TBR. I'm reading the second one in December. Everyone in my family has killed someone. And then this one that have really taken the mystery genre and like played with the format and gone meta with it. And I love when mystery authors go meta. And like, I haven't read a meta mystery book that has not worked for me. Like Jinx, knock on wood. But I'm predicting five stars on this one. It is about, I think it's like um, an epistolary sort of book. Like we're reading the guide to how to murder your employer and like there's people in a, some sort of a school to learn how to kill people I think I can't really remember I'm not going to read the blurb but the little blurb above, above the blurb says from Edgar winning novelist and playwright Rupert Holmes comes a thriller with a killer concept the McMaster's Conservatory for the Applied Arts a luxurious clandestine college dedicated to the fine art of murder so yeah you go to school to learn how to murder people uh, presumably in the style of a murder mystery and I have the Barnes & Noble edition. I don't know what's special about it exactly, aside from that it's hand-signed. But it's got a cool map. And whenever there's a map in a mystery book, you know you're going to be in for a good time. So, five-star prediction. Okay, this one I was actually supposed to read last year. And I couldn't fit it in because it's thicker than it looks. And it just wasn't, like, calling to me in the moment. I think I read two pages <laughs> and then I put it down and I said, no. Nah. No, later. And that is uh, The Devil House by John Darnell. And coincidentally, he is also a singer, lead, lead singer with Mountain Goats. So I got two books by musicians in here. And they both are red and black schemed, color schemed. So I don't remember what this one's about. Presumably a house that's haunted by the devil. An epic gripping novel about murder, truth, and the dangers of storytelling. Okay, so it's meta. Okay, I'm going to say three and a half because realistically speaking, 
it's probably not going to go as well as I want it to, but I want it to be a four and a half. Like my optimistic prediction is four and a half. My pessimistic prediction is three and a half because I feel like John Darnell's books from what I've seen people review them have been like very split. Like you either really like or you really don't. And usually when that happens, I'm like in the middle. <laughs> so we'll see. So three and a half, three and a half or four and a half. Only time will tell. By the way, I will be doing mini reviews and revealing my final ratings and comparing my predictions to my actual ratings at the end of the month. So you've got that to look forward to. And I just found a third nonfiction book. So I lied to you earlier. And that is Unmasked. My Life Solving America's Cold Cases by Paul Holes. I met Paul Holes earlier this year in March and he was one of the nicest guys. I, I've i met authors before, like quite a bit now because I volunteer at the Tucson Festival of Books every year, which is so fun. It's like Ashley Christmas, but I, I never get starstruck with them. They're just people. And I don't think I've ever, I haven't had yet, knock on wood again, a bad experience with an author, but this was the first time an author like totally had me so starstruck. I was like, oh my god like I was feeling all fluttery inside and like he's talking to me and I'm I'm not like saying like he is very handsome and I got a picture with him which I made a video about the Tucson Festival books I think you can find it in my playlist even though it's private and there's a very cool clip of him talking about writing this book and how he was just eventually gonna write about like a pretty dry run of his like cold cases but then it sort of turned autobiographical when he started talking about the trauma that his job has inflicted on him and how he like developed severe, like mental health issues because of his job <laughs> and he got really open and vulnerable about it and i really am excited to read this now handsome handsome holes handsome paul holes and he was so nice uh, most of the authors they don't like they're just doing their thing you know that i'm just scenery i'm like escorting them to where they need to be but he was like asking me questions and he was so friendly and we talked the whole way like back and forth to from signing the signing tent and the talk and I don't know I just like <laughs> I've, I've said all this before so sorry if you've heard me say this before and all the people who were there with me the day that I met Paul Holes I also apologize to you but I also don't because it was one of the greatest experiences of my life uh next up we have oh I'm gonna predict four stars on that possibly three and a half because he did have a ghostwriter or a writing partner so the prose itself might not be super great but I think the subject matter will make up for it we'll see uh, next up is a dowry of blood by st gibson everybody loves this I'm gonna predict four stars I don't know much but I do know that it's about one or two or maybe three of Dracula's brides and I think it's told in letters so like maybe one of the brides writes to Dracula, I don't know. And it's sapphic. So I think that Dracula's brides are like sick of Dracula's bullshit and maybe like hook up with each other. That's my guess. I don't actually know, but I'm going to predict four stars. Next up, I've got Terry Pratchett book. I'm fast running out of these. I didn't think I would ever see the end of his published works, but I am getting so close. I think I have four left after this one. At least for Discworlds. There's uh, nonfiction ones and short stories and the science of Discworld and then there's like non-Discworld children's books. I, I don't know. He, there's more but I'll be sad. So anyway this is the fourth I think the fourth Tiffany Aching book uh, which is a it's a middle grade slash young adult series that honestly like I mean if I had to give it a genre category uh, uh, an age category that's what I would give it but I would say that this is a book for it all ages at least the previous books have been and she's a young witch who's growing into her witchery uh, she's aged a couple of years every book like she starts off at like 11 or 12 in the last book I read she was like 14 or 15 I think so I don't know how old she's gonna be in this one and I don't know what this particular book is about but I really like the color scheme and it seemed fitting for October and I am going to say four stars on this one I gave one previous book in this series five stars but the other ones have been solid fours or fours and a half. So I'm going to say four. This one I really want to love because the cover is so beautiful. And that is The Spare Band by Mary Robinette Kowal. 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 I am so hit or miss with this author. 
I three-starred her Jane Austen inspired fantasy series or at least the first book. I've told it gets, it gets better after that but I've never continued to find out and then I also am really up and down with her Ladies in Space series, the Lady Astronauts. Like I've enjoyed them but at the same time like they're just they're just not quite there for me. Like there's something about her writing style that doesn't do it for me but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again. Maybe like six times the charm. Like seems very stupid when I say it like this but look at this cover and it's a murder mystery set in space that's all I got I'm gonna say four stars hopefully hopefully and then we've got and I just finished a book by Katrina Ward this morning that was uh, like all of her books but this is one of her first books uh, Little Eve I don't remember specifically what this is about but it's definitely horror. I think it's about an island and some kids being experimented on. A clan prepares to bring about the end of the world and its imminent rebirth. The adder is coming. One of their number will inherit its powers. They all want the honor, but young Eve is willing to do anything for the distinction. Oh, so it's a cult. They say clan, but it sounds like a cult. A reckoning beyond Eve's imagination begins when Chief Inspector Black arrives to investigate a brutal murder and their sacred ceremony it goes terribly wrong. And soon all the secrets of Alt Nahara, the island, uh, will be uncovered. Okay, so I'm going to say four stars. She always has something very weird and messed up in her books. Or like mind bending or perception reality shifting. And that was certainly the case with the book I finished this morning. But I don't know if it's a case of like she's escalated as she's published more books or what. But I love, 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 loved the Last House on Neela Street when I read it last year. I don't know yet if it's the case where she's going to be an author who can write multiple five star oh my god I love this books like that one because I've only read two of her books so far but I've liked both books I've read by her so I'm guessing this is going to be a four. Now to shift up the vibe we've got another romance and that is Witchful Thinking by Celestine Martin. So this is small town witch vibes falling in love the hook on this one, I think she accidentally like makes a wish and that wish, wish turns into a spell and she, oh yeah, and suddenly Lucy can't say no. So that's, that's the, the hook. And adorably, if you look up this author's husband on TikTok or Instagram, <clears throat> to help her promote her book, he would like go around, I think he was either handing out copies of the book or flyers promoting her book and he was like wearing a t-shirt with the cover of the book on it and it was adorable. I bought it before that I saw that but I just wanted to mention it because it was so stinking cute. I'm gonna predict four stars. Okay Venko by Sherry Dimeline. I know it's got a road trip in it. I know it's about witches. I know it is by Sherry Dimeline is a Canadian person and she's indigenous. I don't remember what tribe she's from but her character is also from that tribe. Oh, Metis. She's Metis, um, which is the Canadian tribe. But I mean, all I needed was the cover and the title and witches. It ha I haven't seen a lot of people loving it though, so I'm a little nervous. Uh, other people's ratings don't affect me, but I do like to see the general trends because I don't usually stray too far from popular opinion, opinion usually, but... I'm gonna guess three and a half, but I want it to be higher. Obviously I want all of these to be higher, but I really want this one to be higher. I wanna be the person that loves this book, but I'm gonna predict three and a half. Okay, this one, <laughs> this little, I got this book special because I saw this cover that it existed. I don't know if you can see. And I love that, I love it. Like the other covers are not good. This one, had, look at the skull and the lady going up the stairs in front of the skull and look at that like I love the font I just love everything about this so it's a really beat up copy it smells really old uh it's kind of awesome I have not read anything by Shirley Jackson so I figured it was probably time that I do that and also look how short it is so it's like the perfect book for me to do this 31 days challenge I predict four stars I want it to be five but historically, whenever it's an like older author, a lot of the times with me, the language does get in the way of my enjoyment. And I don't know if I'll be able to acclimate in such a short period of time to her language. 
Like I tried three or four times to read Pride and Prejudice before my brain understood what was going on and really clicked with the mood and the intention that Austin was going for. So I just don't know. So four stars, but we'll see. Nervous about this one because it could be weird like in a way that I don't like, but it looks so fun. And that is Claire DeWitt in the City of the Dead. It's a mystery. I think it's got a little bit of dystopia in it though. Uh, but she's a PI. She used to be a teen detective. It's set in New Orleans and she is investigating a murder. And I know there's like two or three more books after this, but um, I haven't seen many people I know actually read this, but it just, it looked so fun. And I found it on Book Outlet. And when I was looking for spooky season books to put on my TBR, I needed a yellow book to match with this one. And I was like, well, what the heck? Let's do it. I'm going to predict three stars though, because I'm, I'm nervous. But maybe it will surprise me and I will love it. But like, I, there's no, realistically, there's no way all of these are going to be four and five stars. So I'm just thinking this might be one of the ones that's three, but I'm hoping not. Okay, Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. So this one is actually kind of a hefty chonker. I did not expect it to be so heavy. Oh, but I think it's just because the pages are really thick and it's a really high quality book because it's only 368 pages. Okay, that makes me feel better. Because <laughs> when I just picked this up just now, I was like, holy shit, am I gonna be able to finish that in two days? This is a vibe. I bought it for vibes. I don't actually know if I'm gonna like it. It might be a little too dark for me. And what I mean, when I say dark, I don't mean too violent or too scary. I mean like toxic people are not my thing. And I think this is about a toxic person. So it's about two people who work in a bookstore and the main character whose name is Roach promising is a true crime obsessive who then becomes obsessed with this woman who comes to work in her bookstore and I think that she gets a little unhinged if it's if it's funny and toxic I think I can probably do it if it's like humanity is a terrible dark cesspool toxic I will not like this book so I'm gonna say this is either gonna be four stars if it's funny are two stars if it's not and I'm thinking it's not going to be funny although look I mean it's it's very kooky looking the marketing could have gotten it wrong but it's not giving me like this book is like gonna blacken your soul vibes even if the premise does a little I love the back too like they really are uh, blurbing this uh, Aaron Kelly says dark as Satan's basement Katrina Ward, she who, who, whose books I was just talking about, says, will work its way under your skin like a splinter. Catherine Ryan Howard, whose books I have not read, comic but also pitch black dark. Okay, those two things don't seem like they can go together. But it says comic, so I'm going to help be hopeful. Eliza Clark says, impossible to put down. Julia Armfeld says, tense, addictive, and sticky underfoot. What the heck does that mean? And then Will Dean says, deliciously dark. I don't know. You don't often see books blurb like that. So there's my production. Four stars or two stars. Can't make up my mind. It's going to be one of two extremes. Okay, I've only got one, two, four books left. So this one I am finally getting around to, even though it scares me, because uh, we are reading it for one of my in-person book clubs. And that is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. My Heart is a Chainsaw is like one of my top favorite horror novels of all time. If I read it again, probably it's going to be one of my top favorite books of all time at some point. That's my prediction on that one. But this one I've heard is not as charming or the main character of My Heart is a Chainsaw is so lovable that anything else that's going on in the story is like tempered by her lovableness because you just love her and you want to spend time with her no matter what's going on. But I don't think that's the case for this. I've heard it's so well written. I don't know if it'll scare me, but I think it might disturb me, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not going to be scared, but I'm going to be like, oh, I feel bad. I think it's revenge, but like, is the deer the one taking the revenge? I think it involves some hunters and like a deer. I don't, I don't actually know, but I'm imagining in my head that a deer is hunting men in the woods. That's what I'm thinking this book is, but I have no, I don't know. My prediction is going to be 
four stars because part of me is going to want to give it five stars and then the other part of me is probably going to want to give it two stars for being disturbed because I don't like being disturbed so it's going to end up at four that's my prediction okay <clears throat> third to last Agatha Christie so this actually is not a book she put together herself it is a collection of supposedly tales of the supernatural now I don't know what that means in relation to Agatha Christie or if I've read any of the books in this collection I don't know if they're Poirot or if they're Marple or if they're standalone don't know where they previously were, were collected I don't know who put this together but it, I, it was a buy one get one buy two get one free sale at Barnes and Noble so I mean, this was one of the books available and I like Agatha Christie so I just picked it up but um yeah I don't I don't know previous short story collections by her I've given pretty good ratings to like 3.75 so I'm gonna guess 3.75 but I'm very curious to see if any of these are actually supernatural or if it's just like it looks like it's supernatural but there's actually an explanation going on because I have a hard time imagining her writing super actual supernatural stories okay second to last and this is an author I have had a hard time with in the past and that is Ruth Ware and this is a really pretty edition that I just could not resist because I want this to be the book of hers that I finally like. I mean, I've, I've liked the other books I've read by her, but I haven't loved them. I've g I gave them both three stars. So I read um, the one that everybody says is their favorite and I was so unimpressed with it. It was uh, the, the key, something in the key, the turn of the key. The one that's the retelling of the story by um, the old guy from the old times. It just completely fell out of my head. Here's, here's the story whatever I'm gonna give her a third try and this one sounds the most interesting to me of all the books I have not read of hers and that is main character is left an inheritance by Mrs. Westaway and I don't think that she knows Mrs. Westaway and then she has to go to a house with other people who also were left things by Mrs. Westaway and I think murderous things happen in mysteries and like twists and turns and all that stuff so that sounds really interesting to me, like way more interesting than the other ones. Oh, I also read the, not her latest, latest one, which I have zero interest in, but the the one that was set at the college that was sort of like Dark Academia where the girl April was murdered, whatever that one's called. I'll put it here. Uh, three stars. That's four. Three stars. But I'm going to optimistically predict four stars because I want it to be four stars. So that's what I'm going to predict last book which was a total cover by I will not lie to you but it also sounds fun doesn't have great ratings but that doesn't necessarily mean anything I've read several books this year that have terrible ratings on Goodreads and I love them so that would that's for another video though books that I've loved that everybody else hates but this one is The Deep by Alma Katsu so this is a book about I think supernatural occurrences on the Titanic Look at the gold. It's so pretty. Um, the other, the paperback cover of this is hideous. I definitely bought this off Pango because I wanted this cover. So the specifics of the plot, I don't want to get too into, but the little title blurb here says what really happened on board the Titanic. I'm guessing it was ghosts. Ghosts did it. Ghosts sunk the Titanic is, is going to be the takeaway here. I have absolutely no idea if the cover is going to predict how much I will enjoy this. If it did, this would be a five star book because I love this cover. I don't know, there's something so soothing about it and so pleasing for me. But I think more realistically, it's going to be either a three star or a four star. And I say that because I have stupidly scheduled this to be read on Halloween and I only have one day to read it. So I have to read this whole book, which is 420 pages in one day. I mean, I've done that before, but it's a work day, so it's gonna be tough. So if I'm not vibing with it, I'm not gonna be able to finish it. But if I am vibing with it and I finish it in, in one day, like I've scheduled myself to do, that means that I really liked it. So four stars probably. I don't, I don't think it'll be a five star 
this doesn't seem like it would have any of the things that normally cause me to give things five stars in it but I think it could be a good time and I was like super obsessed probably like many of you with the Titanic when I was in middle school um, for obvious reasons but not just because of the movie like I actually like read history books about what happened on the Titanic and I have like an illustrated guide like with like it's not called a blueprint is it a blueprint of the ship and like I read all kinds of nerdy nerdy books about the actual ship and what happened so it wasn't and I think I wrote a paper about it in eighth grade also I think I I, I was more obsessed with the actual sinking than I was with the Jack and Rose of it all unlike my sister I, I don't have a solid prediction on this one I'm gonna I'm gonna guess four okay I'm gonna guess four based on the cover but it's probably gonna but I'm gonna guess four. And that, friends, is my October, oh, chipping away at Mount TBR spooky season edition. We'll see if I can get all of these read in 31 days. I'm thinking I can do it. So 21 of them are physical copies, and I've definitely read 21 physical books in a month before. So that's very possible. The others are audio and one ebook. I think I can do it, but I, I mean, I've got other content that's actually non-spooky set for October just because that's the way it worked out, but you will see me again at the end of the month with bullet reviews of these books and an actual comparison of how my predictions stacked up to my actual experience. And I hope you have a wonderful and lovely spooky season. Jerks, farewell.